For more problems and videos like this for linear algebra, you can take a look at Surai Studies. Link is in the description box below. Let's start with what you already know, and that is how to find the generating set for the column, row, and null space of your matrix A. Recall that the generating set for the column space of A is made up the columns of A. So that's your first column, your second column, your third column, and your fourth column. Now note, this is not equal to the column space of A. The span of this is equal to the column space of A. Span means all of the possible linear combinations of these vectors, of these columns, will generate, will span H. They will scale or they will combine to form the column space of A. Then the generating set for your row space of A is just your rows. So that's your first row, then your second row, and your third row. Then the set that will generate your null space of A is made up of all of the vectors X that your matrix A sends to zero. In other words, AX is equal to zero. And specifically, it is the vectors that multiply your free variables in parametric vector form. All that means is grab your matrix. Remember that these variables, these unknown list of numbers, can be represented Presented as a vector. So we're just trying to find all of the vectors of this form that will combine with this matrix to give us zero. And all of the combinations of those vectors will generate the null space of A. So in other words, you just want to row reduce this. Check out the video in the top right corner to see how I did that. But from here, you want to get the solutions in parametric vector form. So remember that each column is attached to a variable. So we have 1x1 plus 2x2 plus 0x3 plus 3x4, and it's equal to zero because remember that we're doing ax is equal to zero. Then we have 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 1x3 plus 2x4 is equal to zero. And then at the bottom, we just have zero is equal to zero. In other words, there are many vectors of this form that will combine with our matrix to give us the zero vector. That's what the zero is equal to zero means, many solutions. If we remove all the zeros, we have this. We can remove the ones, move everything over. And then these are solutions, but they're not very clear, which is why we have something called parametric form. And you need to identify your free variable for that. So your free variable is the one associated with the column that does not have a pivot. So remember that your pivot is just your leading entry in row echelon form. So this is my leading entry and this is also my leading entry. So these here are my non-pivot columns and therefore the associated variables are x2 and x4, meaning those are my free variables. So then the second step of parametric form is to write all of the other variables in terms of those variables, meaning we just move these to the other side. They become a negative and now we have x1 is equal to the following and then we move this to the other side and so x3 is now equal to this. And we know that x2 is equal to x2 and x4 is equal to x4. It can be anything. Now make sure you actually write them in order like so. So x1, x2, x3, and x4. Now this is parametric form, but we want this in parametric vector form. So we take our free variables, which are x2 and x4, write this form down, and then you ask yourself how many x2s are here? There's only negative two x2s. How many x2s are here? One. How many x2s are here? Zero. How many x2s are here? Zero. Now same thing with this one. How many x4s do I see here? Negative three. How many x4s do I see here? Zero. How many x4s do I see here? Negative two. How many x4s do I see here? One. So this is really the work for this. Now we have this in our parametric vector form. So the generating set of the null space of A is made up of the vectors that are multiplying the free variables in parametric vector form. So those are these two vectors right here. Now we found the generating sets for all of these subspaces. But what is the basis for these subspaces? Well, let's look at the coordinate plane, which we know is the second dimensional space of all real numbers. Why second? Because every point is just two things inside x, y. So we're going to call this our vector space, v. Why vector space? Because points really are vectors. So this whole thing is our vector space, everything inside this blue box. And let's say that I have this subset. A subset is just a collection of vectors inside your vector space, or in other words, something inside your vector space. So that's what I have. And the subset is a subset space. So subspace is just when your subset also satisfies the conditions of a vector space. So in other words, it's a vector space within a vector space. But to be specific, we say that it's a subspace of V, of the vector space. So H is the subspace, and it's a line. So we can have this vector right here, this green vector. And then we can have this yellow vector, and maybe we can also have this purple vector, and maybe we can have this orange vector. And the idea is, if you take all of the linear combinations, so span, if you span these vectors, span means you scale them, you combine them, then these vectors will span, will generate H, your subspace. So this here is the generating set for this subspace. Just like these are the generating sets for these subspaces. Now the idea of the basis is removing redundant vectors, vectors that don't need to be there, and only leaving those that are independent. 
linearly independent. What do I mean by that? Well, if you take a look over here, this yellow vector is really just double the green vector, and this orange vector is really just double the purple vector. So the orange and the yellow vectors are really based off of the green and the purple ones, so they're not independent. They depend on the green and purple ones. And so the idea of the basis is that you remove all of the vectors that are not independent, that are redundant, that are duplicates, that are based off of other vectors. And then we say that that is the basis for h. h is based off of those two vectors. Now here's a fact. These vectors in parametric vector form are already independent. So knowing that you have to find the bases of these generating sets, and you also know that the bases is just basically removing any redundant vectors, meaning you only will end up with vectors that are linearly independent, I'm telling you that these are already linearly independent, then guess what your bases for your null space of a is going to be? The same thing, because these vectors are already linearly independent. You don't have any redundant vectors here. So the theorem is that these vectors that multiply the free variables in solution of ax is equal to zero in the parametric form are the vectors that will be in your bases of the null space of a. Now what about the column space of a? The theorem in short just says that the columns that will be in your bases are your pivot columns. So you would have to know which columns out of these right here are pivot columns and to do that you would need to get it into row echelon form to find out what your pivots are because remember your pivots are your leading entries but in row echelon form. So when we do that, we see that there's pivots in the first and the third columns. So I go here, first and third columns. Those are my linearly independent vectors, and those will be in my bases. So I'm going to take my first and my third column, and this reinforces my point. We have some vectors that will generate the column space of A when you combine all of them. But your bases is just these two vectors that when combined, your column space of A is based off of. You don't need more than that. That's the point. The bases is exactly what you need, no more, no less. And we removed redundant vectors. Just like over here, we removed the vectors that we didn't need. We only left those that we needed. Now to find the bases of your row space of A, the theorem in short just says to take your non-zero rows of your matrix in row echelon form, reduce row echelon form. So you would have to go to row echelon form, reduce row echelon form, and only include the rows that are not zero. So we want non-zero rows, so we're not going to include this. The only ones that we're going to include is this one and this one. And again, proving my point, all we did to go from the generating set to the bases is remove redundant vectors. And it's so much more visible here because you can literally see these are the same. So this one here was redundant. I didn't need it. So I removed it and I was left with these two. The fact is we're only left with the independent vectors. Now I know that all we did here to go from a generating set to a bases for these certain subspaces was remove redundant vectors, but sometimes they'll just give you a generating set and they will ask you if this is a bases for a certain vector space. And yes, you will have to remove redundant vectors, but but other times, the generating sets won't have enough vectors, and so you'll have to add a vector. And I'll show you how to figure that out in the next video. I'll see you then.